Hey everybody, this lesson is on the glycerol phosphate shuttle and in this lesson we're going to talk about why the shuttle is important and why we need it. So we all know that NADH is produced from glycolysis and in the process of producing NADH, NAD plus is reduced and NAD plus levels decrease. Now NADH produced from glycolysis and produced from the TCA cycle can be converted to energy uh, in the form of ATP via the electron transport chain. Now the electron transport chain is within the mitochondria. It is along the inner membrane of the mitochondria. However, the problem is, is that the mitochondrial inner membrane is impermeable to NADH. So NADH produced in the mitochondria um, via the TCA cycle is okay. It's already in the mitochondria and it can be processed uh, via the electron transport chain. But NADH produced from outside of the mitochondria, NADH produced from glycolysis for instance, has to somehow get into the mitochondria, it has to somehow get through the mitochondrial inner membrane. And the reason the mitochondrial inner membrane is impermeable is because it is composed of 80% protein which makes it highly selective. So this is the reason we need this shuttle system. The glycerol phosphate shuttle allows us to sneak in the protons and electrons from the NADH and sneak it past the mitochondrial inner membrane so that we can get the energy out of it through the electron transport chain. So we'll discuss this in more detail in the next slide. So here's the mitochondrial inner membrane with the complexes of the electron transport chain. So now if we have glucose in the cytosol, we can process that glucose by glycolysis to produce 2-pyruvate and in the process of glycolysis, we can take 2-NAD plus and reduce it to 2-NADH and also get two hydrogen ions or two protons. So in order for the cell to generate ATP from the NADH produced in the glycolytic pathway, it has to try to smuggle in protons into the electron transport chain. And what the cell does is it actually takes a proton from the NADH and another proton and it actually adds it to another chemical known as dihydroxyacetone phosphate. And it does this by uh, utilizing the enzyme glycerol 3 phosphate dehydrogenase 1. And in the process, the NADH is reduced to an NAD+. And now those two protons are actually added to the dihydroxyacetone phosphate right here, producing glycerol 3 phosphate. So now that we have glycerol 3 phosphate in those two protons and their associated electrons, the glycerol 3 phosphate can now be acted on by the enzyme glycerol 3 phosphate dehydrogenase, which is located on the outside of the mitochondrial inner membrane. Now, glycerol 3 phosphate dehydrogenase 2 is also known as flavoprotein dehydrogenase. And as its name suggests, it utilizes FAD as a cofactor. And once glycerol 3 phosphate dehydrogenase 2 acts on glycerol 3 phosphate, we recycle glycerol 3 phosphate back into dihydroxyacetone phosphate, and in the process, FAD gets reduced to FADH2. So now those two protons and two electrons are now on the FADH2. So once we have FADH2, what we can do is we can shuttle those protons and electrons to this protein known as ubiquinone. And once ubiquinone receives the electrons and protons, it becomes ubiquinol. And in this process, FADH2 gets recycled back to FAD. Once we have ubiquinol, ubiquinol can travel to complex 3, give its electrons to cytochrome C, and this leads to complex 3 pumping four protons into the intermembrane space. And once the cytochrome C has the electrons, it can transport those electrons to complex 4. And this will lead to complex 4 pumping two protons into the intermembrane space. So once we have enough protons within the intermembrane space, they can be pumped back across into the mitochondrial matrix through complex 5 or ATP synthase. Now every four protons get that gets pumped across complex 5 or ATP synthase produces one ATP. So if we look at how many protons we've pumped across, we have 4 plus 2, and that becomes 6. So 
we can pump six protons back into the mitochondrial matrix through complex five or ATP synthase. So if we have six divided by four, that will become 1.5 ATP. Now this is different than NADH produced in the TCA cycle. Now if we actually want to look at NADH produced in the, in the TCA cycle, it doesn't have to find a way to cross the mitochondrial inner membrane. It's already in the mitochondrial matrix. So the NADH from the TCA cycle can be acted on by complex one, donating its hydrogen ions or its protons and electrons. And in the process, complex one pumps out four protons into the intermembrane space. And once this process has been completed, everything else is uh, pretty much the same. So we take those two hydrogen ions and those two electrons and we essentially provide it to ubiquinone again, another Q. That ubiquinone becomes ubiquinol. And then that ubiquinol then travels to complex three, where complex three pumps out four protons into the intermembrane space. Then cytochrome C travels to complex four, where complex four actually pumps out two protons into the intermembrane space. And then again, once we have enough hydrogen ions in, in the intermembrane space, they get pumped back into the mitochondrial matrix. And again, every four hydrogen ions produces one ATP. So with an NADH produced from the TCA cycle, we have four hydrogen ions here from complex one, four hydrogen ions pumped out through complex three, and two hydrogen ions pumped out through complex four. So that gives us a total of four plus four plus two equals 10 hydrogen ions. So 10 hydrogen ions can be pumped back across ATP synthase or complex five. So if we went 10 divided by four, that would leave us with 2.5 ATP. So NADH produced in the TCA cycle gives us 2.5 ATP instead of 1.5 ATP like NADH produced in the glycolytic pathway. So in summary, NADH produced from the TCA cycle generates 2.5 ATP, and that is because it enters the electron transport chain at complex one. And remember that when it enters the electron transport chain at complex one, it pumps out four protons at complex one. And in total, because it enters in at complex one, a total of 10 hydrogen ions or a total of 10 protons are pumped into the intermembrane space. And remember that protons are pumped across complex one, complex three, and complex four of the electron transport chain. So an easy way to remember how many protons are pumped across each complex, remember four, four, two. So four, four, two. So four protons are pumped across complex one, four protons are pumped across complex three, and two protons are pumped across complex four. But when we produce NADH from the glycolytic pathway, we don't get as much ATP. It only generates 1.5 ATP. And that's because we have to skip the first step. We skip complex one. And remember again, complex one pumps out four protons. So this reduces our number of protons pumped in the intermembrane space. We only get six protons. So we only get protons pumped across complex three and complex four of the electron transport chain. So anyways, guys, I hope you found this video helpful. That was a lesson on glycerol phosphate shuttle. If you like this video and if you found it helpful, please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.